In your recent podcast, uh, you said death of SaaS is something which you are uh, looking at, you're considering, and uh, you want people to wake up to that truth. Is it because of the agentic AI wave or what is your thesis? Why did you call? Yeah, so I yeah. think if you look at SaaS, right, like it started with Salesforce and Salesforce, <coughs> Mark Benioff came from a from a database company, Oracle, Oracle. right? So, yeah. so everything at that time was database centric and a lot of the application has been built like uh, structured data centric, right? So, right. so we very much think about like tables and rows, right? Um, so the reason I said that of SaaS is I think for the first time actually, we, are, we can actually move from a structured to unstructured world. And we actually don't have to even deal with structure anymore, right? So I give this very good example is like, hey, we should just build a next generation SaaS on like a MongoDB, right? So everything is unstructured, everything is a document. So you talk to a customer, his whole profile can be, it doesn't have to be tables, it could be text. Then yep. every single conversation that you do with the person on Zoom, everything is again very unstructured. And the reason that works right now is, is because of AI, because for the first time you can just throw AI at this huge, humongous, unstructured data. And it actually works better on unstructured data than on work on tables. So, and you can you can get anything that you want. So the reason I said debt of SaaS is like, it's a debt of SaaS the way we know it. So uh, in, in two ways, actually, one is I think, on the UI side. So right now the UI is very much out of this clunky web-based. Um, I think previously during the mobile era, era, we tried to go from the the web to mobile, but we are still not very successful. So now I feel like we need to go to maybe like a voice, right? So you yeah. just talk into Salesforce, hey, show me the leads in this area, or I need to know about so-and-so, and it actually tells you back, right? Yeah. So voice can be like one of that interface. The other interface I think we never really explore is like a touch interface, right? Like touch and others, right? So multimodal. Multimodal. Yeah. Yeah. So that's on the on the UI. And then on the whole experience on the back end side is moving from an unstructured to unstructured. So you don't <clears throat> store anything in a structured way. So if you look at all of that, SaaS looks very, very different than what we are used to. And that's why I said like I think the SaaS, as we know, should be dead because it's just not useful. It's like 20 year old architecture that's made mo mainly like, you know, moving from on prem to web. The web to mobile and web to cloud didn't do much with SaaS. Now, like from web to AI, I feel like we have the tools right now to completely, completely overdo. Like, if you look at a new age Salesforce, it won't be what it is. Yeah. No, so this is amazing. You, you know, I want to take you back to that question. Here you are at Sun and then you assume this really important role at VMware. We are heading corporate venture capital, corporate innovation and development. And then uh, you move to 11.2 uh, in Blumberg. So you've seen various technology waves. Now you're bold enough to say SaaS is going to be dead. But tell us what were the waves like back then? And what, how did it progress and get to where you are and why are you so confident about the death of SaaS thesis? Yeah, so it, I think if you look at like the, <clears throat> during the Sundays, right? It was the internet, right? Everything coming to internet. I think that was a big wave and it created a, a lot of successful companies like you know Amazon is a very good example and everything moved to e-commerce at that time. Uh, that was the first wave that I've seen. The second wave was mobile wave. The mobile wave was mainly on the on the social media side, like with Angry Birds and Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. So it allowed you to do a lot of stuff real time and with photos and others, right? On, on the cloud side, I, I would say between the data center and the cloud, it was a big transition, but it didn't bring any new technologies because it was mainly like, hey, you have a data center model, which is a CapEx model, and you move to a cloud, which is a OpEx model, and somebody else is maintaining it for you. So it enabled a lot of innovation. A lot of companies came out of that, like a SaaS companies. But in terms of the fundamental architecture, there was not much like innovation there. So, but but again, it allowed for quick iterations and cheaper iterations, right? So, so now after cloud, which I would say like around 2010, the first AI wave, <clears throat> about 10 years ago right 
Uh, so it was mainly predictive AI where you have this uh, algorithms like anomaly detection and clustering, but those were just algorithms and you needed data. <coughs> so, so, so that's one of the reasons a lot of those companies failed or it didn't work very well is because you needed the data. Like yeah. even if you look at a company like Waymo and Google, they spent like years and years collecting data for so their autonomous driving, right? So any company that couldn't generate that much data didn't become successful.